Hey guys, welcome back to the channel um, and welcome to today's video. So today's video is one that I've been wanting to do for a while, been put off because I don't really know what I'm doing. So a lot of reading has been going on, watching other YouTube videos to get an idea and attempt to have a go at it. I don't know if it's coming for on the 33s, but since I've got mine back on the road, the fuel gauge uh, doesn't work whatsoever. So whether you've got, it doesn't matter how much fuel you've got in the tank, my gauge just reads zero the whole time or just below, even below the warning light it just stays at the bottom doesn't move regardless so after doing some reading um, online and trying to find out what's going on one of the common thoughts it could be is the sender unit so either maybe a disconnected connection a wire or the sender unit itself can come off the pump apparently and then sit in the tank so it might need reconnecting to read properly so I'm hoping that is the issue uh, but that's what we're going to do today. So we'll get outside, get the cover off the car and then pick up from there and let's keep our fingers crossed we can fix the issue today. The very first time we started the car, the needle was sort of on the empty line and it was displaying like the low fuel light. Then it just continued to keep going down after that and it, it literally just sits here. But let's just fire up the car quickly and I'll show you. So, as you can see, it's easily, easily about half a tank still left um, but yeah regardless I've tried filling it up um, and we've also tried disconnecting the battery and then trying to get like um, leaving it off for a few hours and then putting it back on to see if like, resetting the battery would trigger the fuel pump um, but nothing but I mean hopefully we fix this today right guys so I'll keep up with as much detail as possible as we go along but I'm just going to disconnect the battery because um, obviously there's wires and stuff in the pump and we don't want to leave that connected while we're messing around with the fuel pump. So disconnect them and then you've got four bolts on your fuel pump cover, which I believe are 10 mil. So knock those off and then we'll pick up the video uh, from there. As you can see, plates lifted up. These two connectors can come undone, which then will throw up the plate to move out the side and then means disconnect um, uh, fuel line return line and breather line disconnect them move them out of the way and then I think from again doing some reading um, you have to use the method of getting off that black ring which is like a giant screw for your pump and then once you've got that undone then we'll be able to have a look and see what's going on I will check the wires in these connectors as well because I'm sure one of them is the sender plug so I mean unless I'm very lucky and we can see some damage or that just needs a bit of a clean but um we've got the connectors off which is these two thankfully one's a two and one's a three pin so you'll be able to put them up together um but they don't look in too bad a condition so we just move that out of the way we just loosened these three lines as I've said um so we're gonna start prying them off Right guys, so as you can see, all the lines are off. Um, now for taking that ring off, which from what I've seen, you're going to want a flathead screwdriver and a hammer. And then what you're going to do is line the flathead against these bits and then just gently knock it. You probably have to use a bit of force to get it going, but then it should start to undo. And then once you've undone that ring, you'll be able to take your uh, pump uh, cap off so that's what we're going to do next might try and film a bit of it if we can but space is limited and if anyone is trying to do this job it's an absolute pain on the back of your legs and your back trying to bend in to your boot to do it but needs must if you want your fuel gauge to work so let's crack on
Right guys, ring is finally off. That is an absolute ball ache of a job. But we managed to get off the what how we said, so upgraded to a slightly longer flathead. Honestly, you'll thank me later. It'll save you back and your legs slightly. But try and get the longest flathead you've got and then just keep hammering. Um, but it did take an absolute age to get off, but that's finally off. And then move them out of the way. We've got a bag, a bit of old rag. Might need more, but now we're going to attempt um, to pull the pump off and see how everything looks. I will try and get a shot of how it looks um, straight away. So anyone else doing this job, um, if it looks similar, then hopefully we can fix it the same way and get that gauge to work. But as far as I'm aware, and the pump will be sat in a cradle and then the sender unit, I can't remember, I think he's to the right, but it should, it should be attached somehow to the pump as well. So if it's not and it's floating around down there somewhere, then that's potentially what the issue is with the fuel gauge. But let's get this pump out. Right guys, so we're on to day two and I think from the last bit of footage you've seen things have developed very quickly so I will go over everything and how we've managed to pull the pump and the fuel sender out and managed to get that dismantled um, but what we'll do now is clean this bit so one of the guides online on one of the owners clubs was that if your fuel gauge is reading permanently full, permanently empty, um, or a bit inaccurate, then one of the things it could be is the bit inside the sender, um, and over time it can get gun can and get stuck, and that's potentially what one of the reasons is. So we're gonna clean both sides, um, front and back, and the actual sort of float itself, because that looks a bit nasty in there as well. Um, so we're going to clean all around here and then reattach it and then hopefully that solves the issue. Now mine was reading permanently empty and the bottom does look the worst. And also looking inside there's a bit of gunk there. So hopefully by cleaning all that up maybe that's what my issue was and that's why it was getting stuck on the empty mark. So we'll try and maybe film a little bit of this but... Um, it's a bit of a windy day and my phone stand has just been decapitated by my boot lid so I'm back to holding my phone um, so we'll try and set up some form of I don't know, little bits of time lapses of what we're doing but what I've got is some cotton pads and some acetone that we're going to use and as I said clean the float and this bit both front and back and then just check everywhere else and just give that a bit of a clean up and then we'll reassemble it and then when we get to reassemble it i'll explain how everything came out and went um, and goes back in and then fingers crossed the fuel gauge works Guys, so we've done what we said using some acetone um, to clean the main shaft in the sender unit. Um, as you probably would have seen from the original footage, this bit was really, really rusty and um, had sort of high spots on it. So, with a mixture of using acetone and um, a blade, just to carefully lift the rubbish off 
that we've cleaned all around there. The dirt was also on here and also on the back. So as I said, obviously clean this side and don't forget to clean the back. And then we clean the inside, as you can see, it didn't look that filthy, but there's a heck of a lot of dirt that's come off just by doing that simple clean. The float itself, we've cleaned inside as well. So just cleaning sort of all the channels and then we've cleaned around the outside of the float as well and then lastly clean the inside of the pod on both just to try and get any dirt or any spots that could be making it stick. So we're going to assemble this and then we'll catch up in a minute. Alright guys, going in a bit reverse here but that's back assembled. A tip for getting these clips off, as you can see we had a few casualties ourselves is to very carefully using a knife go this side of the clip slide the knife under very very carefully not to break the clip so you've got that bit lifted and then if you've got another person it's more easier get a flathead screwdriver there and sort of twist and it will pry open the clips but you have got a lot there's both well, there's clips running both sides. You've got them that side and along here, and there is one in there as well. But that bit's back on. Um, fuel pumps ready to go back in along with the sender unit. So with the sender, sender unit, and if I can find some diagrams, I'll try and pop them on the screen as well. This sits so this bit's the bottom bit that sits in your tank this bit's the top and when you go into your tank in a minute which is what we'll do the sender unit is off to the right and sort of sits at an angle like that at the very corner and there is a bracket up against the back of the tank which this part here slots into so you need to sort of slide it onto the bracket in that motion so to undo it it's that way and then you can pull it out once you've dropped it in place it'll have to go to the right and side on the bracket but i'll try and put a bracket on the screen if i've got got it just so you know what it looks like and then you can sort of visualize because it's ridiculously difficult to try and see what you're doing in the fuel tank and then fuel pump sits so if you sort of horizontal with the boot directly in front of you and sit so uh, this part is at the furthest and this bit's facing you this bit is up against the back of the tank again and there's like two female connectors where these two slot in so when you see it in the tank you just want to pull the pump sort of that direction and it should come out the female connectors when you're removing it and then the senders off to the right but like I said you need to sort of grab the sender when it's in the tank and then you do have to do a bit of force but try and slide it to the left and it will come free of that clip then you'll be able to pull it out of the tank so it's just doing that in reverse I'm still working on a very full tank fuel so if you are attempting this some looks would definitely be coming handy but hopefully that helps but we'll crack on and hook everything back up and then keep our fingers crossed. As I said guys, going in and then that way and then feeling for the bracket over here. I'm not in the car and I'm not sat down going oh wow my fuel gauge is working and that's because it hasn't it's, it's not worked what we did 
as you would have seen from the video, clean the sender out, um, get all that rust. And I genuinely thought that was the reason why the gauge wasn't working because it was rusty um, and there was gunk on the bottom bit where the float was sitting. And I genuinely thought that would have been the, the issue. Turns out it doesn't. We reassembled it all, put it back in the, put, um, the tank, put it back in the tank, reconnected, sat in the dash. I didn't want to record it. I thought, see if it actually works first, turn the key side the car and the gauge doesn't go anywhere. I took it for a quick drive to see if that would be the issue, maybe. Once you start driving it will go up. Um, but the gauge is still broken. So, back to the drawing board. I will put out this video still though, because I think it generally does help, or hope, I hope it will help somebody out at least anyway. I mean, I was struggling to find information out to get it from several different places. So uh, hopefully, I'm not saying it's the best video in the world, but I do hope it helps somebody that might want to tackle the same situation. What I'm going to do next is still try and resolve the gauge issue. So one of the things that was mentioned in one of the owners clubs was to do an multimeter test, which I didn't have at the time, but I'll show you in a minute. Um, I've got grabbed myself a multimeter and I bought myself a Walbro fuel pump because when the pump was out, it looked a bit old, tired and rusty and it probably looked easily genuine pump that came on the car. And as these cars are getting older and older, it just seemed a good idea. Now I know how to get the pump out to actually swap it out with a new pump. So we'll be doing that in an up and coming video and I've got to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to do these tests with the multimeter to see if I can figure out if it's um, an electrical issue instead of the sender. But yeah guys, thank you for watching anyway. I don't blab too much, but I do hope this video helps somebody out that might be in a similar situation and fingers crossed for you. It is the sender that's causing the issue and once you've cleaned it all out, it works lovely. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Um, take care, stay safe. See you later, guys.